and uh, Mayor Priet has an urgent, urgent meeting to attend today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mama Hatte. Uh, KK. Any apologies on your side? No, I'm covered, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable members, let me take this opportunity to uh, welcome you all to this portfolio committee meeting of agriculture, land reform, and rural development. As uh, we have also invited to the platform, the department as led by the DG, Ndate Ramasodi, with the officials of she, the department. She, she, yes, yeah, she's entering. Uh, Manyamza, Manyamza, mute your microphone, please. You are audible. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, uh, also been able uh, to invite uh, the DG with the officials of the department. Uh, we have uh, the Land Claims Commissioner. Umamu Koboto with the officials in the commission. Uh, we have um, invited the city of Cape Town as well, uh, Ms. Erika Nodier, who will be uh, also taking us uh, through as to what uh, they've been doing uh, uh, as uh, the city in terms of the land claims of uh, District 6. We have uh, uh, opened up the platform to uh, uh, people of District 6 who have uh, uh, had interest uh, in the proceedings and uh, have asked the, the committee to look into the land claims that are outstanding of pre-1998. Honorable members, we will therefore be taking uh, the three presentations as put by a uh, city of Cape Town, then the department, and then the Land Claims Commission. Uh, I will uh, request uh, that uh, as uh, uh, Mayor Erika Node has uh, indicated at 11, she will uh, like to be excused due to other commitments. So we will take uh, their presentation and uh, engage uh, with uh, questions of clarity, if any. As uh, uh, I've said, honorable members, this will be a, a session that uh, the interested parties in District 6 can listen into and be able, if they have any issues they would like to raise, they can raise that through the committee, and we will then be able to conduct a meeting in order to conclude the issues that they've been able to bring before uh, the committee. Ours was to ensure that all the remaining District 6 land claims of pre-1998 have been settled and finalized as uh, the minister has been uh, uh, on record on this matter. So that is uh, why we've convened uh, this session, honorable members. I hope we don't then get uh, derailed to other matters of District 6 and we remain focused to what we set out to achieve. Let me therefore, uh, honorable uh, members, uh, Welcome all and say good morning. Fue more a dumelang, molueni, sani bonan, kuninonke, basali, basem zans Africa. We will then, honorable members, invite the city of Cape Town, Umamu Erika Nodier, to take us uh, through their presentation.
Uh, good morning, Chair. Thank you very much. And good morning to all the members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, my name Man is Eric. Dear, please switch on your camera for the purposes uh, of our recordings. And we are live on some of the, the uh, social media channels. Thank you. Recording in progress. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, as I've said, my name is Erika Nordia. I'm currently the Executive Director uh, for Spatial Planning and Environment at the City of Cape Town. Um, uh, Chair, I'm trying to share my, my screen to put the presentation up, but it just says that the host disabled uh, me from, uh, from uh, sharing my screen. So if maybe I can just get permission to put the presentation up. We'll uh, ask our secretariat, Manyamza or Mamkakaza, please assist to Mamuno Dia to be able to share the document. Thank you, Chair. Um, maybe while I just try and do that, uh, um, to also just mention um, that obviously the city has got various responsibilities, uh, uh, one of which is with regards to uh, planning matters, spatial planning and policy matters in the city in order to govern future development uh, uh, from, a, uh, from a built environment point of view. Um, and then we also have uh, specific responsibilities uh, with regards to regulatory uh, uh, processes um, as well. So in this presentation and following the um, uh, uh, the guidance um, that the committee has given uh, in the, the process, um, I would just like to take you through uh, some of these responsibilities and where we are with various of these processes. Uh, so, Chair, can I just quickly confirm that you can see my screen and yes, the presentation? Uh, we can see it if you can just put it on a uh, slide mode only so it can be enlarged. Is that better, Chair? Yeah, we're seeing your entire computer at the moment. Uh, oh, okay. Let me just quickly try and fix that. Yeah, so we can just uh, see the slide. It uh, makes it easy for the members to be able to read through as you present. No, absolutely, Chair. It's just on my side. Uh, it is showing uh the full slide so let me just okay. make sure that you see the correct one is that the correct one yes Jay? that's the correct one okay that's perfect thank, thank you, you very much you thank you very much uh, thank you so much and thank you to all the members as well um, as I've indicated, uh, we've got different roles to play in terms of uh, governing spatial development within the city of Cape Town. Some of that relates to, uh, obviously, spatial policy matters, and then there are also regulatory uh, uh, processes that we are responsible for. Um, so, so in terms of the presentation, um, I am going to present you to some of our initiatives in terms of the broader District 6 and the development frameworks that are in place, um, obviously some of the work that we are doing in terms of the public realm in order to create um, a, 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 a livable uh, space for uh, all the residents of District 6 and in particular the claimants when they return uh, to the area. Uh, we will speak to some of these statutory approval issues, uh, some of the financing arrangements, and then obviously also some of the ongoing collaboration. And through that, um, I will also reflect on uh, some of the challenges, but also in terms of what we think has worked and how we can continue um, our, our, our collaboration in this regard. Um, so just in terms of uh, putting it into context, it's obviously that there are various uh, uh, processes underway at, at present. Uh, the first is the National Department of Agriculture, uh, Land Reform and Rural Development that is currently in the process of uh, the phase three of the project. Phase three con uh, consists of 108 units uh, that have been constructed and that needs to be uh, transferred 
transfer to the claimants um, in this area as well. What the city has been doing in this process is really to focus on what we call the local spatial development framework. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, we do understand that District 6 is as an important uh, component of the city and in the functioning of the city uh, needs to be, uh, if I can use the term, stitched back into the urban fabric of the city. And with the creation of all these additional units in the area, and also the increase of residents in this particular area, there is a need for us to also then consider how that relates to the surrounding areas, uh, how uh, traffic flows uh, will work, public spaces that are required, um, additional needs for any uh, uh, social facilities and social amenities that need to be addressed. And all of these aspects are then addressed in terms of what we call a local spatial development framework framework that looks at um, how uh, all these issues are addressed to ensure that it is a functional, uh, efficient and effective uh, area within the broader city framework as well. Um, obviously, throughout the process, we have been engaging with various stakeholders, uh, those that represent the various claimant groups, uh, the various government departments, national, provincial and city departments as well. Uh, we have been engaging with key stakeholders like the District 6 Museum, uh, schools, institutions, various other NGOs as well. Um, and then also uh, various workshops that we have hosted uh, with the general public where they were able to participate in the process uh, to also identify what their needs are and what the key aspects are in order to address uh, the development in the area. One of the other aspects that we are looking at from a city's perspective is particularly with regards to the public realm. Uh, the city is responsible for the implementation, um, the maintenance, and also then the functioning of some of the public spaces. And these public spaces are very important to the city and to the residents, uh, especially in District 6, because it does include a lot of the memory of what the area used to be like. Uh, um, and the way that people congregated in these specific uh, spaces as well. Um, so the city would like to also celebrate this history uh, in the development of various of these public spaces, uh, looking at the memory and the culture of the area and making sure that we celebrate uh, and commemorate some of uh, these issues within uh, the area, uh, the activities that could take place in these particular spaces, uh, because all, we also do realize that uh, this will now be a, a, a rather densely populated area and the need for public open space um, a, and recreational sp spaces become even more important because we want to make sure that we create livable communities um, and not only dormant areas with residential development as well. Um, and part of that also then will inform uh, the greater urban form strategy that we are proposing in terms of the District 6 Spatial Development Framework. So in terms of the public realm strategy, as I've explained, it looks at various of the public spaces uh, throughout the District 6 area. Um, it uh, definitely also then looks at how we can uh, connect these together as well as the roles that each of these spaces play uh, within uh, the District 6 area. Uh, we've also done quite a lot of work with regards to water and our source to sea program because there's a lot of water that runs from the mountain um, that we do feel then also creates various opportunities for us uh, to look at sustainable development and to improve the quality of life uh, within these areas. Part of the, the process in terms of the public realm um, have then included some detailed and in-depth studies with regards to water, uh, various uh, uh, engagements with the communities uh, and workshops where we worked through the different spaces, uh, what people remember about the public spaces, trying to extract as much information from the community itself in terms of how they would like to see these spaces uh, 
functioning into the future and then also developing a whole range of guidelines uh, in terms of the development, the landscaping, uh, uh, street furniture, art, etc., uh, to be implemented in these various spaces. The next step of this process would be uh, to now develop some of, of these spaces and do detailed designs uh, for implementation by the city uh, uh, as well in these areas. So where we are in the process currently is um, obviously after a whole range of various workshops that were held um, and various engagements uh, with the various stakeholders as indicated, uh, we are at the process where we do have a draft uh, LSDF um, that we will be submitting to our various committees uh, towards the end of June in order to finalize. The purpose of the local spatial development framework is then also to guide development not only to uh, uh, the public but also to other private users uh, in the area with regards to the most appropriate uh, land uses, the most appropriate development options and to ensure that the infrastructure capacity uh, is in place to support the proposed development into the future as well. Uh, there are a couple of issues that we are still currently considering and are in negotiation with, uh, with the various departments in order to finalize the local spatial development framework. Um, and I've just listed some of the, the, the issues that we have. Um, they are definitely part of a discussion and where we are trying to find resolution at the moment. Uh, but for example, um, there is a bit of a, a, a request for a larger area uh, for Memorial Park and we are trying to see how we can adjust uh, the various plans in order to accommodate uh, that as well. Uh, we are also looking at um, uh, additional uh, public spaces and especially spaces where uh, children can congregate and have safe, safe spaces to play um, and to wait for transport to the schools etc. So the next steps basically would be that we will um, go through the comments that we have uh, 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 um, uh, received based on the draft spatial framework that was uh, uh, circulated, uh, work through all the various comments and deal with any of the outstanding issues. Um, there is a follow-up meeting to take place with some of the, the key stakeholders in the area as well. Um, and then we intend uh, to have final approval by June 2022. Uh, with regards to the local spatial development framework. In terms of some of the statutory processes that the city is involved in um, and where we play a key role includes building plan approvals, occupancy certificates, etc. Um, in terms of this process, what uh, after the completion of the various 108 units during 2021, um, the city also then worked with the national department uh, in terms of the uh, a submission and the consideration of various building plans. Um, at the time, there were some issues identified where the units did not uh, comply with the national building regulations and standards. Um, and these issues were then uh, identified and pointed out uh, in terms of permission of use letters that were issued. Um, these deficiencies were also then recorded in terms of these permission to use uh, letters that, that were issued to the national department after which the National Department then also appointed a contractor in order to address these deficiencies and to ensure that these are rectified. Um, at the same time, um, those have now been dealt with um, and various inspections have taken place during the latter part of February and is ongoing in, in March at the moment to determine whether uh, there is compliance to the national building regulations, at which time the city will then be able to issue occupancy letters to the national department uh, to indicate that uh, the units do comply uh, with 
the 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 uh, national building regulations um, in order for them to also then uh, affect transfer to the beneficiaries. Um, I also just want to note under this point specifically um, that it has also come to to light that uh, the national department doesn't have to necessarily wait for these occupancy letters to be issued um, in order to start the transfer process because the national building regulations exempt uh, the state from uh, uh, the processes related to uh, building plan approvals as well as the issuing um, of occupancy certificates. Um, so that process can run in parallel, but because we are uh, definitely making sure that, um, you know, we have the claimant's best interest at heart, uh, we do want to ensure that the buildings are safe and uh, compliant, um, and therefore we'll still submit a comment and we'll submit these occupancy certificates certificates uh, to the national uh, department as well. Um, I think in terms of some of the intergovernmental relationships, uh, we, we are recommending that the intergovernmental steering committee that uh, used to be in place, uh, which is a political steering committee between the various spheres of government, uh, be re-established in order to improve and to uh, uh, coordinate various uh, 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 interactions between the different spheres of government and the different responsibilities that everybody has with regards to the development as well. Um, on a technical level, there is an intergovernmental project uh, uh, steering committee meeting in place where we work together to address the various issues and where we try and resolve many of the technical aspects with regards to the development going forward as well. Um, but we also uh, then propose that uh, MOU be uh, uh, put in place and that that MOU then specifically also deals with roles and responsibilities um, of the various spheres of government um, and, and the different parties, uh, the different roles and responsibilities and processes related to the regulatory aspects. Um, and then also uh, any issues of escalation uh, should it be necessary. This also becomes particularly important uh, now that we will be moving into the next phase of the development uh, that will also require the implementation of the further 954 units um, on the site. So uh, we, from our experience, we think if we work together from the start, uh, there is clarity with regards to the processes, the requirements, the roles, responsibilities, and escalation procedures uh, that will also greatly assist to ensure that there is efficient implementation uh, of the project going forward. Uh, one of the issues that uh, we are also dealing with as part of the project steering committee is with regards to the funding um, of some of the infrastructure, especially as it relates to the further phases of the development. Uh, various interactions and engagements have taken place with regards to the provision of bulk um, and internal service, uh, services that may be required, as well as the potential contribution that the city <coughs> can make to the infrastructure development, uh, various engagements and funding proposals have been made, uh, but we still have to finalize this matter uh, based on an implementation plan so that we can clearly determine uh, what infrastructure will be implemented in the various years so that these could adequately be addressed in the budgets of both uh, national and uh, local government, um, as well as various engagements that still need to take place. Uh, for example, with National Treasury in terms of how that funding may be made available as well. Uh, one of the aspects that I also thought might just be important to note to the committee uh, is that of land invasion. So over the last two years, we've seen quite a, a lot of invasion onto some of these vacant uh, uh, parcels of land within the District 6 area. Um, and even though the city does have an interdict, 
uh, obtained through the courts in terms of the eviction of any of the uh, um, uh, people on the sites. Uh, this is, was made very difficult with regards to the Disaster Management Act in place, um, but we have to consistently patrol these areas and secure these vacant land parcels. That is then also why uh, we, we, in conclusion, uh, recommend that uh, we need to continuously uh, educate and capacitate the various stakeholders with regards to the different spheres of government and the different roles of, of government in these processes. Um, it has been very uh, difficult in some instances when we are trying to engage with the public and with other stakeholders around the public realm strategy and the spatial development framework, for example, uh, and then not to get into conversations with regards to the actual uh, housing typologies or the actual claims that have been submitted and the allocation of units. Um, so I think there is an ongoing need <clears throat> to, to make sure that all participants understand the different roles and responsibilities between the different spheres of government. Uh, we also would like to uh, uh, ensure that phase three is completed, that the occupancy letters are issued, um, and that uh, transfer can take place as soon as possible to the beneficiaries. Uh, we are also encouraging the department to, as quickly as possible, uh, continue with phase four and, and the further phases for development of the 954 units, um, not only because it is important uh, to complete the restitution process, uh, but also the fact that, uh, you know, as long as there are vacant land parcels, uh, it is perceived that this is land that may be um, available for other uses, and it is under constant uh, threat of invasion. So the sooner we can start showing progress on site and development, uh, we do think that we would be able to mitigate uh, some of those issues. Um, and then, as I've said as well, we do believe that uh, the MOU and the continuous engagement between the various uh, departments and the engagements and timeless engagements with regards to the statutory processes, um, the requirements, etc., is quite key to make sure that uh, there is also smooth implementation uh, going forward. So with that, Chair, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Sorry, Chair, um, my presentation is finished. I don't know uh, if there are any questions or comments. Um, honorable members, good morning. It looks like the chair has got problem with um, network. But he's on the platform. Maybe we give him a minute. Or maybe we must continue at this point because um, the chair has indicated that Mary Rita would want to be released at 11. So I would not know the sequence whether he wanted us to take questions of clarity now or after other presentations. I'm looking at the time and 
I think it will be better if we have to release her that we entertain her presentation, if members agree. Agreed, Chair. All right. Honorable members, that is the presentation on issues relating to District 6 from the City of Cape Town. Oh, Chair is back on the screen. Let me hand over to you, Chair. We are about to take to entertain the presentation after you said you may regal, um, request that to be released. Let me hand over to yes. you. Thanks. No, thank you, Honorable Tabe. I just uh, jumped in uh, to the chance quickly. But uh, let uh, us welcome the presentation uh, from the city of Cape Town, uh, Men Odia, who's uh, been able to take us uh, through. I will now uh, take this opportunity, honorable members, uh, to invite yourselves for questions of clarity. Uh, those that have their microphones on, please mute your microphones so that uh, we uh, may not have any disturbances. Uh, we'll take uh, the questions. Uh, all comments, honorable members. You may proceed, honorable Kape. Thanks, honorable chair. I'm trying to get a spot that is better for me in this house because uh, of uh, network. I'm moving from one spot to the other. But, uh, chair, having welcomed the presentation from uh, the city of Cape Town, let me appreciate the decision of this committee on our engagement with the department and stakeholders last time in November that uh, we should receive quarterly a report on the progress based on the history of uh, District 6. One chair, I get a sense when America presenting and saying if they were together from the start, at least there would have been for sure commendable progress. And I want to align this into the competency of local government, the role and their competency, especially with regard to certificates for occupation on this uh, phase three. Chair, my take is that uh, having listened to this presentation, the city of Cape Town has delayed the process because when you read into the presentations, they demanded, which is out of the interest of the occupants, that the structures probably uh, some corrections be made. Think of everything about six months down the line or whatever time on the letters that they wrote, they come back to say this was in fact not necessary. The department is exempted in such, on such procedures. And I don't get it right also when they are saying some of the processes can run concurrently, certificate of occupancy issued or something like that. Do they mean the department can continue placing the claimants into these houses? Why after the, inspec the inspections of the fourth March, they just kept quiet up to now. Don't they have the agency that this process or this claimant should have their houses? But Chair, I just want to know also, for out of this meeting, can America tell us, when are they intending, today is Tuesday, to give these letters to the department? This is their, uh, competency, like I say, leave all these things of special development and all whatever. Let's focus on the completeness of phase three. Department receive letters, correct within 12 months. They do their best, appoint contractors because they also have interest. They call them, come and inspect. After inspection, everything gets quiet. My problem is on the delay on the site of uh, the city of Cape Town. Can we know, definitely. And uh, my last question will be, Chair, how much are they involved on the 
upcoming phases that they have alluded to over 900, phase four, phase five. And what is it that they are doing? They spoke about issues of bulk infrastructure and everything that I know previously that the national department had to care. How much are they involved in the coming phases? And um, are they aware of the court order plan? And how are they willing to assist the department to comply? Besides compliance, which is not my issue, my issue is the, the, the plight of the claimants of District 6. What role is this uh, city intending to play to make sure that there's, there's a speedy acceleration for, 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 for occupancy or speedy resolve of the land claimants of District 6? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Tape. Uh, Ms. Dane. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. You may proceed. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, I just want to thank the lady for the presentation. Chairperson, um, I think um, I was covered by, you know, the, the processes and why the city wasn't involved from the beginning and all of that. I'm sure we'll get that uh, answer. But Chair, I want to raise my concern again uh, by the absence of the minister and both the deputy ministers. We spoke about this in our portfolio committee last week. Um, I would like to... Honorable Stain, are you still there? Honorable Stain? We'll have to come back, Honorable Members, to Ms. Stain. Let's move to Honorable uh, Matthias. Dr. Matthias. Are you back on the platform, Honorable Stain? Unmute your microphone. You are still muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, you may proceed. Thank you. Sorry, Chair. Uh, it seems like there's some technical uh, glitches here. Chairperson, um, I won't repeat what I said. All I wanted to find out is um, I want to raise my concern with the fact that the minister and both the deputies is not here again today. Chair, I think it's very important that we do get some finalization on what is going on with District 6, and I would have appreciated uh, a presentation or at least some information from the minister or the deputies. So can we please ask, Chair, that we get some report from the ministers after this meeting, um, also so that we can uh, get all the information, especially the, the, the issue that was raised by the city of Cape Town. It's very difficult for us here who weren't involved from the beginning to find out why everyone was not invo involved from the beginning. I think, you know, some clarification of that would have helped. That's all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Stein. The Honorable uh, Matthias. Honorable Matthias. Honorable Trader. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning to my fellow colleagues, members of parliament, and the stakeholders that are present in our meeting. Uh, Chair, let me appreciate the presentation from the city of Cape Town on the issue of District 6. Uh, Chairperson, I am, let me raise my concerns. 
and I will seek clarity questions on this. We are aware that phase three of District Six was has began in 2015. It's seven years in 2023. And this phase is not completed. On the presentation, uh, the presenter chair indicated some processes to be followed. And further on, the presenter stated that all these processes were unnecessary. The city of Cape Town imposed some processes to be followed. And years back, it's reported to us that it was all those processes were unnecessary. I just need to know, Chair, if the city of Cape Town, as per the presenter, is said to us that they have the best interest of District 6 claimants at heart, why impose unnecessary processes to this phase that will cause delays of the complexion of it? I just need to know, Chair, why those those processes were, 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 were imposed, and yet they know that they were, uh, they were, they were unnecessary. One. Secondly, Chair, it's quite clear that it, it's at the competency of local government to issue these um, occupancy certificates. Seven years down the line, still no occupancy certificate. The city of Cape Town is not, does not have capacity. They do not have capacity to, to, to complete this phase. And yet there's phase four, there's phase five of District 6. What is it that is causing this? Thank you, Sheikh. I just need um, oh, one, more, one, more, one more clarity, Sheikh. The presenter said the department can run this process concurrently. And yet previously, she informed this committee that there are inland invasion on the land of District 6. Mm. Now, Chair, if there are land invasion and the, 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 the city of Cape Town is evicting people, we run the process concurrently. We we house people, we give them certificate to, of occupancy, not certificate, sorry, Chair. We allow people to get in those houses, and yet city of Cape Town will come and evict them. Can the, the presenter clarify that issue? When they say the department can run this process concurrently, what is exactly that they mean? And can we have that in writing check by end of, 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 of this week? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Trader. Uh, Honorable Mamun Babama. Thank you, Chair. Um, may I please not put on my video as I'm in the, in the middle of traffic. I've just stopped on the side of the road. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mefro Nodier for the presentation. I think it was very comprehensive. I just have a couple of questions to ask um, of her. And the first one, and I'm sorry if I'm taking you back, but the first one is who are the members of the steering committee and what are their different roles? Because in order for me to ask the right person, the question that I want to ask, I would need to know what are actually the roles of each member on the steering committee. I would suppose that the city of Cape Town is one of the of the uh, members, I would suppose that the um, National Department of uh, Rural Development is also there. But if I can just have that clarity from uh, Mafro Nodia. And then secondly, I heard her saying that the department is exempted from national building regulations. 
I actually do not understand this because if the department is responsible for hiring the person who the, or the company that will build the units, then how can they be exempted from the building regulations? If I can just have clarity on those two things, Chair. I do have other questions, but I don't think um, the city of Cape Town would be the right uh, stakeholder to actually answer the questions. So if I can just have response to my two questions, Chair, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mbobama. Uh, the Honorable Matthias. Honorable Matthias. Akbare Briet is got an apology. Uh, let us have Ndabesita Kosikabe Kuru. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to my colleagues and all officials of the department. Chair, I will apologize not to put my video on. I've got a challenge with the network. My take on this matter, uh, Chairperson, is that of the communication breakdown between, uh, between the, the city of Cape Town and the department, which need to be fixed as a matter of agency, because without communication between them, things will not move. As we are aware that uh, the department has been waiting uh, for the responses after those corrections were, were done. Now, they, they need to, to make sure that they communicate in time and make sure that the, the, the project is, uh, is done in, in accordance with the, the time frame of the, of the, the implementation of the, the, of the project schedule. Thank you. I'm done, Chair. Hello? Hello? We can hear you, Honorable Marshal. It seems like the chair is off the system. Okay. I'm not sure. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Um, thanks, Honorable Marshal. Um, Honorable Mashati, you can come in. Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning to uh, the chair, colleagues in the portfolio committee, and all stakeholders present today in this meeting. Chair, I must also apologize for not putting on a video. Connectivity is quite bad, it's raining where I am. One of the issues that worries me with this particular presentation is the fact that ourselves as members of the portfolio committee and members stakeholders present here were quite nicely seated in our houses, being able to connect to these particular platforms in meetings, while the bene, you know, beneficiaries of District 6 are dislocated, are awaiting to occupy the houses or the units that they fought so hard for over the years to a point whereby they were court cases and so forth and so on. And after such a long battle, Chair, we are seated here as a portfolio committee between the department and the city of Cape Town where we are now discussing on how best can the occupants, the beneficiaries of these districts can occupy what is rightfully theirs. Precisely because of issues relating to the department and the city. Now the city comes here today, Slalo, 
and gives us all sorts of excuses why these people cannot enter into their houses based on relations between themselves and the department. At no point are we making reference to the actual beneficiaries whom are scattered somewhere have no houses to stay in. And we want to come here and speak comfortably. Comfortably. And want to delay process which is going to benefit our people. And when I'm saying our people, as public representatives, we represent the people of South Africa. So this type of, I want to call it an attitude, is quite appalling from our side, from, from the side of, of all role players involved, because we should be able to say, irrespective of our own differences in terms of who came away, when and how, because now it seems like we want to, you know, put authority. We want to muscle ourselves around issues of authority, who's responsible for what, if we're not going to do this, these people are not going to enter. While our people there in, in, in the city of Cape Town have nowhere to stay. So as public representatives, ours, can I not be an uh, honorable chair? There is someone who's writing on the chat and intimidating me that I must ask a question. Maybe this person is not aware how the portfolio committee operates, that we are bound to make our comments. We are bound to make take questions and where necessary, we will make comments on things that are not appreciated in as far as this process is concerned. Can we call uh, members, those who are participating here on the chat to order that this is not going to happen in this portfolio committee. It has never happened before and we are not going to be intimidated. As I continue, can the, the city of Cape Town indicate to us when will they allow occupants to occupy those units? Given that the department has done what it needs to do, and if they have not responded to their letter or to communication, when do they intend to communicate so that occupants can enter? And in future, Chair, we must indicate to, to participants here, if they do not are not conversant in on how things are done, they should not participate in the conversation in this particular platform. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member Shati. Uh, Honorable uh, Montuedi. Tate Montuedi. Uh, Honorable Balkaba. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Let me also uh, join in thanking this presentation because it gives us some light. Few questions. One, the compliances, the non compliance elements, are they uniform in all units or are they diverse? Does it mean that all this compliance is something, this non-compliance is something which is uh, common in all units that are, are involved? Two, what, what holds the city from issuing the, the certificates now? Now can be tomorrow or after tomorrow. What is the exact thing that can be said? They cannot be issued because of ABCD as we stay, as we, are, as we are speaking now. Three, uh, she talked about intergovernmental relations. Just a clarity on this intergovernmental, whether they are within or limited in the uh, province or city, or 
it includes under that department nationally. The next one, I haven't had any time frames. Another one I would like to understand again is that why compliance requirement issue comes at this stage of the project. Again, I would like to fully understand in their understanding as a city, what is the subject matter here? Is it mainly the compliance and then in the, in the process of about compliance, they meet the project of District 6? or the district six is an issue. And therefore in the process, we miss some issues of, of compliance. I say this also linked with the uh, need to understand whether the city does believe that this issue or this project of project, project I mean, uh, district six is actually assisting the uh, city in the housing problem. Do they believe that? And then if they believe that they are, all these questions will relate to their attitude in, the, in, in this process. Uh, these are the areas, Chair, I would really like some clarity on because to me, it's not satisfying that all this process is uh, trying to assist these people. I want to get some clarity so that I understand that all these issues are the issues that we meet when we are trying to implement the project, everyone with, with the aim that it succeeds as soon as possible. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kapa. Uh, Honorable Tademasipa. Chairperson, he's just uh, to step out quickly, so I think you can skip him for now. Thank you, honorable uh, members. Is there any other honorable member on the platform who has not been able to recognize who wishes to ask a question? If not, uh, honorable uh, members, I will uh, take this opportunity as uh, we have invited uh, the District 6 uh, Working Committee onto the platform and also other interested uh, members of uh, the District 6 community. And uh, I have uh, requested that they send their questions through the chat group so that we may be able to ask the questions on their behalf since this is a parliamentary uh, committee meeting. And the uh, honorable members will then be able to uh, put those questions uh, on their uh, behalf. Uh, let me then uh, take uh, the opportunity uh, as uh, it has been uh, raised by some of uh, uh, the community members um, okay uh, may Karen uh, Beitenbach has asked uh, please advise uh, in what forum or when the claimant representative organizations may have an opportunity to ask question we will abide by the rules and follow guidance and I would uh, respond immediately on the May current. Uh, as uh, we embarked on this uh, issue, we did invite all members of uh, District 6 to come and make their submissions. And it was uh, from the submissions that were made that we began this process of engaging with a number of uh, entities uh, that have been responsible on uh, the District 6 uh, uh, matters. This session was uh, made uh, possible so that we can get the necessary information as a committee 
so that uh, we may be able in the next session be able to convene a meeting directly with the beneficiaries to see if uh, the issues that have been said by the department, by the Land Claims Commission and the city of Cape Town, if they are indeed correct and if there are issues that we may need to follow further uh, uh, in ensuring that we are able to resolve these uh, matters amicably. So the committee will be arranging a meeting uh, that will be able to uh, attend and deal with these uh, issues. In the interim, there's uh, uh, also a consent from uh, uh, some of uh, uh, the claimants uh, who uh, feel that uh, in the process and the uh, long period that uh, uh, has uh, been undertaken, we are losing a number of uh, elderly claimants that uh, had already lodged these claims and they are passing on without seeing the certificates been given to them. So how quickly will these certificates, and a lot of honorable members have asked this question, when will the certificates be given back uh, to uh, the claimants? If we may then hand over to Menodir for responses, and then uh, we can be able to move on to the next presentation of the department and the Land Claims Commission. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just before I respond to some of the questions, um, I, I think I would just also like to ask our Deputy Mayor, uh, who is also our uh, MAKO member for Spatial Planning and Environment, uh, Alderman Eddie Andrews, uh, to also just respond, and then I will follow with some of the detailed responses uh, after him, if that is uh, 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 all right with you, Mr. Chair. No, please uh, go ahead. That's fine. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good uh, good morning to to the honourable members and also uh, members of of Team Cape Town. Chair, I just I've made a few notes um, and I'll respond to those and uh, other issues. Uh, for example, the occupation occupation letters um, and when will those be issued? Also, why that is important. Um, and also the uh, what, how many units are outstanding that still needs to be inspected. I'm going to ask my team to, to, to comment on that. But the comments that I wanted to make, I, I completely agree with the honorable member who, who raised the concern that the claimants are dying. Uh, the claimants are dying and they're not able to see this dream realized uh, for them to, to ensure that the, the restoration actually takes place uh, for them. I think it's been... It's been far too long, and I think everyone in the room appreciates that, and it's a very valid concern, and we also have uh, that particular concern. And, and that is why, Chair, I'm, I'm keen to, to, to hopefully solicit your, your comments on the way forward. Uh, uh, Erica made, uh, presented on some key recommendations that we think will ensure the process runs a lot more um, efficiently, but more importantly, effectively, uh, those respective committees are also really important. And I think if everyone's in the room uh, before the next phase commences, I'm really, I'm fairly confident that we could iron out uh, those, those, those cases and those issues so that it's not really escalates to a level where you have uh, comments pertaining to processes both misinterpreted uh, and also uh, misrepresented as well. So we're really keen to, 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 to consider that. And then also, Chair, the, uh, the question about do we, as the City of Cape Town, consider uh, the District 6 uh, program as, as part of an opportunity to satisfy the housing need? The answer is yes, an absolute yes. We, we see every single opportunity uh, to satisfy the housing need whether it be enabling an environment to those who can perhaps afford a bonded home or whether it's enabling an environment where uh, we have inclusionary housing or whether it's in Kailitsha where we have our small rental scale program where we're assisting uh, residents over there who are unemployed and own a property and we're able to secure partnerships for them with a third uh, inst uh, financial institution 
where they can finance a development of a second and third dwelling unit on their property. Uh, that's how serious we are to ensure that we satisfy the housing need because it's been on record by all three spheres of government saying that we the, the idea of satisfying or um, accommodating those on the housing a database should not be left alone to government. We need to ensure we pursue other processes. We in an enable an environment can partner with government to accelerate the housing need because we're also aware at times there are people over time who move into other income streams who now don't qualify for an affordable housing unit but can now qualify for a for a for a bonded unit. And and I think also chair the um, I, I note the comment earlier made by the. Um, the Honourable Member, that this process has been imposed. Um, I think in January, uh, Chair, I, I personally went on site with the with our local district team and inspector there, precisely to see for myself, of course, just two months into office, to understand what has transpired there and what is the root cause of the delays. Now, um, when I left there, I, I, I was concerned. And the reason why I was concerned, Chair, by a very important safety aspects that I think, if we're talking about restoration, if we're talking about the dignity of the claimants, it is also important that we don't compromise on, on key aspects, safety aspects as well. Uh, and to give an example, Chair, uh, two examples I want to, to reference would be one, if you're looking at it, of course, it's a um, it's a two-story uh, two-story unit. Uh, the top unit there's a there's a balcony, there's a railing there. Uh, the height restrictions or height requirements have not been complied with. What does that mean? Practical terms, it means that any claimant and or, or members of either family with a small baby, the baby if they play on the balcony will fall through right underneath of that railing. And of course, the consequence of that, I don't think we want to. Uh, we have to safeguard against that as well. Another example, Chair, I want to reference something as very important in terms of uh, the staircases. Uh, the very last step, the measurements are, are inconsistent um, in terms of there should be consistency in the measurements of the steps. So when there's a fire, for example, and you're running downstairs and, and you want to exit the building as quickly as you possibly can, and that last step, what we call ergonom ergon ergonomics, that last step, will really put you out of sync. And you may think that the step is further down, but it's a lot closer to you than you think. And you may trip and you may fall. And of course, then you won't exit uh, the, bu the building if there's a fire hazard, perhaps, uh, and you may just cause a stampede. Uh, these are, are realities that we, we have to be aware of. And hence, it's important that we ask the, the team, the contractors, to ensure that those specifications uh, are complied with uh, chairperson. And those are, are very important from, from a, not just in terms of ensuring that a claimant gets a uh, uh, their housing opportunity or restored back to land that was rightfully there, but we do it with dignity and we do it in a safe manner as well. So we're really committed to ensuring um, um, you know, and assist where we, where we possibly can. But it brings us to the question that we're looking at, the plight of the claimants in terms of what has happened and why they were forcibly removed from the site, but also now the, the compliance issue as well. And I think that the, the, uh, the team Cape Town, we've really been keen to have pre-engagement with the professional teams where we can, uh, you know, ensure that they are aware of what is the expectation is, in the importance of building according to the specifications. And so we're really keen to remember. And hence you can see in Erika Nadia's presentation that she's really, again, repeating the call to have those pre-engagements uh, with, with the professional teams uh, uh, prior, timelessly, prior to the third phase as well. But Chair, I want to conclude to, to highlight that we are um, that we are absolutely committed to uh, to ensuring that uh, this uh, process goes as as smooth uh, and is, uh, as effectively and as efficiently as uh, it possibly can, uh, because we don't want any more claimants to die. And but I think if we can all you know be aware of of the safety aspects, those things can be remedied. Chair, but we we remain, commit, remain committed to and resolute to ensure. At this process, and there are some remaining inspections that have happened. We received the request for investigation mid-February, and the team has been out on average, we know, one to two times a week to investigate as the units have come online and have been complied. And of course, we are this current week. We will still be issuing occupational uh, letters to to for those units who have fully complied. Chair, but I'm just going to ask uh, Ms. Nadia to comment on the 
um, on the occupational letter, the issuing thereof as well, uh, and why. Uh, I, I think I spoke about the importance of compliance, uh, but also any other uh, points that I may not have, have, have picked up um, as I've been listening to the debate. Uh, thank you for affording uh, me the, the opportunity, Chairperson, and, and honorable members. Thank you, uh, Dr. Andrews, for the input. Perhaps uh, before uh, Menodia comes in, I um, didn't take the opportunity to pose the questions I intended to. So I will add on those as it appears to have, uh, uh, there's been challenges within the approvals of building plans and new land use management plans. Uh, perhaps honorable members, uh, the city of Cape Town can elaborate on these issues. Are the buildings, as we meet today, uh, meeting the building standards? If you can uh, just clear that for us and I can see or uh, that they, uh, Andrews touched a bit on it, but I'd like an extensive uh, response uh, on the buildings themselves. Are they meeting the building standards? And has the city provided any feedback on inspections done between February and the 4th of March 2022? If you can uh, uh, cover me on those. We'll now hand over to Menodia to take us through the responses. Thank you very much, Chair and Honourable Members. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for the questions. Um, as and, uh, Alderman Andrews has said, uh, you know, just a commitment from our side in the administration of the City of Cape Town as well, that uh, District 6 has obviously been one of our priority projects, our priority areas. Um, it is key, not in terms of restitution, but also in terms of spatial transformation uh, within the city and various other uh, spatial strategies that we have. So uh, just to make sure that there is absolute commitment to ensure that these processes are implemented as efficiently as possible um, and that the claimants uh, are able to move into these processes. So we are 100% committed to work with uh, all the other departments to ensure that this happens expeditiously. Um, I think maybe just also to note, and I think there were a couple of comments with regards to uh, why has this taken seven years and why has this taken and so long, etc. Um, I think just this part of the explanation of many of these issues is obviously, uh, I think the department will be better placed to explain the entire process from where they started and where we are now. Um, but but I do not think that uh, you know the the building plan or the occupancy certificate or occupancy letter, you know, comes at the end of the process. This is a endorsement after the entire process has been completed um, to endorse that uh, all requirements um, have been met in terms of the national building regulations and the different standards as well. Um, so it definitely isn't the occupancy certificates that have caused a seven year delay in this process at at all. Um, I also would like to, to, to just indicate that there are different, many different processes um, from a statutory point of view that the city uh, is responsible for and that we are engaged in. Um, some of these relate to land use processes. So that would either be to uh, change the rights of properties in terms of what you can develop on a property, which we refer to as the zoning of the property. It may refer to issues of um, uh, as, as site development plans, subdivisions, consolidation of properties, etc. Um, and these processes are, are separate. That all has to happen even before um, actual building activities can play, take place on the site. Uh, in particular, it's also important to note that obviously uh, District 6 is declared as a heritage area and there is a heritage protection overlay zone in, in the area. 
um, so many of the developments in the area also has to comply uh, with some of the requirements in terms of heritage, uh, which is another uh, sphere of government in terms of the provincial department that also then has to comment on these issues. Um, so to touch on one of the questions around the membership of the steering committee, then um, uh, that is made up of the, the different spheres of government, the National Department of Agriculture, uh, Rural Land Reform and, and, and Rural Development um, are some of the key role players in that. Uh, the Department, National Department of Human Settlements also participates in that process. Uh, our provincial uh, department also participates in the process as well as the Land Claims Commissioner from the Western Cape and then the City of Cape Town as well where we have different departments uh, including our Human Settlements Department as well as the spatial, spatial planning department that participate in the steering committee um, as well. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, if we consider, uh, uh, you know, going forward and, and depending on the phases, where we are in with the different phases of development, uh, you know, there might even be a need to maybe uh, extend that steering committee uh, because it might be in the initial phases to include um, other competencies and other role players in that process as well uh, to ensure that anybody that has uh, input or an interest uh, in any of the processes can also then participate uh, in that steering committee as well. Uh, so just in terms of the actual uh, 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 buildings that are on site, as Alderman Andrews has said, uh, we issued, um, so after the building plans and the buildings were inspected, uh, basically in January uh, this year and the, the different dates for the different units, but um, I think most of it was completed uh, over the December period and then over January as well. Uh, the city issued permission to use uh, a certificates to the national department. In that permission to use, um, it basically then gave the national department a permission to use these units and to start the processes of transfer to beneficiaries, although it was highlighted that there were certain safety concerns and areas that were not compliant, and also proposed then that these be corrected within a particular uh, time frame. The reason why we do that is not to unnecessarily hold up the process or to, uh, uh, you know, delay the process of beneficiaries getting occupation of their units. But as Alderman Andrews has also clearly pointed out, uh, the safety of the residents and their families and anybody else visiting these spaces uh, need to be also uh, considered. And we have to make sure um, that the units are, are, are of uh, a particular quality that is required in terms of the national legislation as well. Um, so, so the reason why those issues were pointed out was for the safety and in the interest of the well-being of the beneficiaries um, and anybody else that will occupy or visit these units as well. Um, as I've also said in my presentation, the National Department then appointed a contractor and did address these issues that were raised before as well. Um, so there was a period where various uh, 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 changes and improvements um, have been taking place. Um, and we have now done follow-up inspections to see if these units now comply uh, with the regulations. We have not... Uh, issued the communication after these inspections have been completed. Uh, we will start to do so this week. Um, and there are a couple of inspections that are still outstanding uh, that we will also expedite to complete so that those um, occupancy letters can also uh, be issued as soon as possible. Um, Chair, you asked exactly how many units uh, are still outstanding and do not comply. Um, as I say, we haven't finished all the inspections, so I can't give you an exact number of units, but um, I'm quite confident uh, 
from the inspections that have taken place, uh, even though uh, they may not 100% comply, they, they are within a margin of acceptable error. Um, so, so that is like where, where the, the differences are so uh, uh, minute that it doesn't really impact um, on, on the intention and therefore we will still be able uh, to continue to issue those occupancy letters as well. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have the exact number because we must complete the inspections, uh, but we are confident that in most of these, we will be able to issue those uh, occupancy letters. As indicated, uh, we will be drafting um, an overall letter as well to the department um, that will be uh, submitted by the end of this week as um, I, I can't remember uh, which... I think it was uh, uh, Honorable Stain who asked if we can submit the letter by the end of this week. Uh, we will be submitting a letter to uh, 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 just outline the process um, and where we are currently, um, while we also then issue those various occupancy letters uh, starting from this week. Um, and then as soon as all the other uh, uh, inspections are completed and we can confirm on those units uh, that we are satisfied um, that the safety issues have been adequately addressed um, and that we can issue those letters. Uh, those will also be, be issued then. Um, I think also just uh, there was a question about whether we are aware of the coming phases in the court audit plan. Uh, we are very aware of those processes. We are very aware of the court audit plan, and we have been working uh, very closely with the, the National Department uh, with regards to the implementation and the implementation of that plan. Um, it was one of the requirements as well, and that is also where the discussions with regards to uh, the needs and the requirements for various infrastructure to be implemented uh, emanated from as well was, was to ensure that we jointly uh, work together in terms of the implementation of that uh, plan that was approved by the court. Um, the plan that was approved by the court is also forms the basis of what we are considering in terms of the local spatial development framework, uh, because we do realize and recognize and appreciate the fact um, that a lot of work and a lot of engagement with the local communities and the claimants have taken place in order to develop that framework plan. And our intention was therefore not to change any provisions of that plan, uh, but rather to enhance it with regards to certain aspects that the local authority may be responsible for uh, issues like, for example, the public realm, the public spaces, uh, uh, transport issues, non-motorized transport, um, and various other aspects that couldn't contribute to the quality of life of residents in the area. Um, so it was definitely the basis of, and we've worked jointly, and the National Department has also participated in our various uh, workshops with the community uh, where that plan has formed the basis of, of our ongoing work and understanding uh, what we can do and where we can optimize uh, what has been included in that plan as well. Uh, in terms of the quarterly reporting, I think the National Department submits the quarterly reports uh, in terms of progress on the implementation um, of the court orders. So I'm sure in their presentation, they will be able to uh, speak more with regards to those uh, quarterly uh, reports that, that have been submitted as well. Um, just also to note, as, as I've mentioned, is um, basically the National Department can continue with the transfer of units to beneficiaries and beneficiaries can take occupation of these units. None of the processes of the city or uh, these occupancy letters are currently a um, a hindrance to that process continuing and being implemented at all. Uh, that can happen based on uh, the previous work that was done and as I've indicated as well uh, in terms of the permission of uh, to use letters that were issued um, and, and also the fact that uh, because by the nature of a state development um, in actual fact they do not have to wait for the local authority 
in order to give permission, uh, but that in this case, because the development is done by state, uh, the city is a commenting uh, authority rather than uh, approval. So there should be nothing that uh, currently uh, hinders the, the process in order to make sure that we transfer the units to the beneficiaries. Uh, the city in its comments just highlighted those particular safety concerns uh, in the interest of the beneficiaries and to ensure that those issues are adequately addressed. Um, thank you, Chair. I hope that I've, I've, I've responded to all the, the questions, um, but if there are any follow-up questions, I'm happy to take those. Thank you, uh, Menodia, for your uh, responses. Uh, I do uh, see hands in terms of follow-up questions, but I will request honorable members uh, due to uh, time. Remember, we still have two presentations to uh, deal with uh, from the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, and also from the Land Claims Commission. Uh, I would want to just put the question uh, to uh, the uh, Menodia so that uh, we can be able to receive these questions in writing uh, with the letter that uh, she will be sending. I have a question also from the uh, District 6 Working Committee sent by Karen uh, Beidenbach. Uh, which uh, uh, thanks the committee for the invite, but would like to know as to how many units are now safe for occupation. A very important issue for older and vulnerable claimants who may struggle moving around in the building, especially since there are no lifts, only stairs due to the budgetary constraints. As the, uh, the working committee, they will want to know from the department why they allowed the defects in the first place, and then why they are taking so long to fix the safety defects. If the question can be answered today, we will ask for it in the next opportunity. We'll pick up on this question, uh, uh, from uh, the department. It can be able to cover the question as well as the Land Claims Commission. Honorable members, I see your hands are up. If you may just precisely ask the questions with no comments, just ask the question so that we may get the response in writing uh, for men or dear. Honorable Kappa. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. That's one question. Why did she find a number of questions irrelevant? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Kaba. Uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Chair. There was a question asked about the relevant stakeholders that the city of Cape Town uh, is having engagement with. The question asked by Mr. U, Honorable Kappa that, which are those stakeholders? Are they in, in, internal or external in terms of, are they within the city of Cape Town, province or national? Also, Che, I wanted to ask Kukuti why the questions of the, of the portfolio committee are, uh, are irrelevant. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chaita. Uh, the Honorable Mema Khadzi. Chairperson, mine is to just to request the City of Cape Town to update the portfolio committee as they give certificates of occupancy so that we don't have to wait for the next quarter to get another report. As they give this uh, certificate, they must update how many as they do so. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Mayor Mahlati. As I've uh, put it, uh, we will request uh, all these uh, questions to be responded to in writing and sent back to the committee with the letter uh, Menodia will be sending to the Secretariat 
by noon on Friday, this uh, coming Friday. Let us, uh, therefore, honorable uh, members, move on to the presentation and we will take them uh, together, the presentation of the department as well as that of the Land Claims Commission. If you may note your questions on both presentations and then we will take all the round of questions after the two presentations. Let me therefore take uh, all of, also just a point of procedure before Menodia as well as Ndate Andrews uh, leave the platform. Do take note that the committee will be doing an oversight on uh, the last week of the term uh, around uh, the 28th to the 1st of uh, April. We intend to do uh, our oversight and therefore we'll be visiting the uh, District 6 uh, and uh, seeing the community there and seeing these uh, buildings. So please uh, note that and uh, the correspondence will be sent to all interested entities uh, uh, on the oversight of uh, the Portfolio Committee. Thank you. Uh, DG, Tate Ramasodi, let us uh, invite you and the officials of the department to take us through the presentation. Over to you. Mayor Masati, you may lower your hand, please. Thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Chair um, of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture and from the Rural Development and the Honorable Members of this committee. And thanks for the presentations that we had from the City of Cape Town. We need to confirm that the City of Cape Town and the Department are working together uh, to outline the uh, inputs in terms of the outstanding uh, issues that have been indicated. Uh, earlier on. Chairperson, there were two questions that I think that we have got to respond to in our presentation. The first question is why did it take that long for us to deal with the defects and when would those defects will be uh, dealt with? And I would like uh, Kelvin and uh, Naidu, Mr. Kelvin Naidu, who will be making the presentation, to also respond to the issues that were already raised um, by the uh, committee on the issues. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll then hand over to Mr. Naidu to do the presentation, which will be a precursor to the presentation that will be made by the commission by Mr. Uh, Dr. Wayne. But we would like to indicate that there's an interrelationship between the two uh, because we work uh, on those as the department. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Naidu, with permission of the chair. You may proceed, Dr. Naidu. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, good morning, Chair Ngosi. Uh, good, good morning, members. Uh, we've, we've structured the report to have one consolidated report, um, just to be more efficient. Um, I will present the development aspects and from the commission side, Dr. Wayne Alexander will cover the aspects pertaining to the claim. The way that the report has been consolidated, it does start, however, with uh, the aspects of the claim to give the background to the claim and um, the background to the development itself chronologically. So I will share the presentation, but I will ask uh, Dr. Alexander from the commission to commence with the presentation, and I will address the issues of development when it gets to it, as well as the inquiries that have been raised and address those questions as part of my presentation, Chair. Um, so uh, just to the Secretariat, I'm, I'm disabled from sharing my screen. Um, we have submitted the, the presentation this morning, so if it's the Secretariat who, who will be projecting, please do so, but um, I don't have the permission granted to do so. Anyamza, Mamkakaza, please enable uh, Dr. Naidu to be able to uh, share the presentation. Presentation granted. Permission granted. You may proceed. Uh, 
Uh, Chick, can I just ask if you can see my screen? Clearly. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, I will stop now and Dr. Alexander will commence with the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair and Honorable Members. Thanks for the opportunity to chair again. I mean, to chair, to share our really now, a uh, chair with regard to the district's um, payment process and the redevelopment. So that's what we're going to present today. In the interest of time, I think we'll just move on to the next slide. Um, Colin? Sorry, Chair. The presenter is not audible enough. I will attend to that. Uh, let him proceed. If we pick up the ongoing disturbances, then we will have it corrected. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Chair. Can you hear me now? Because we are lots of people in the office online, different meetings that I will definitely try and project. Yes, we can hear you. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, Chair, I'm going to start with by saying the historical background for District 6, as you know, is already well documented. So we'll commence just to say that the District 6 claim was settled in the year 2000 after a framework agreement um, was reached at the time between the department, the city, and the, the then elected District 6 Beneficiary Trust um, Chair. We are now working towards the finalization of the claim uh, that was settled in the year 2000 as we now continue with the building uh, of these units which will then finalize uh, the matter. Um, Chair, in, in saying that, uh, this uh, uh, framework agreement therefore then paves the way for the development um, of, of, of the area and about 42 hectares of land was then made available by the city. Um, uh, settlement agreements were processed uh, chair over a period of time and, and 42 C grant funding made avail available for the District 6 development of District 6. Uh, it should be noted chair that, that not all claimants opted for redevelopment. Some obviously opted for financial um, compensation. Um, the, the first two phases, that's phases one and two, um, uh, were those phases were managed um, by the District 6 um, Beneficiary Trust and the developer of, of phase three, which is the, the current units that we're talking about, uh, the red uh, um, um, part of the department were then um, the developers. Next slide, please, Calvin. Okay, I've touched on this so we can continue, but safe to say that that the, 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 the grants made available um, were three over 300 million and another uh, additional grants made available uh, totaling 351 um, for, for, for the development of District 6. Next slide, please, Calvin. So just the statistics in terms of the, how we went about settling this claim chair. So we received 2,760 claims were lodged before the cutoff date of 31st December 1998, in keeping with the Act. 110 claimants um, were found non-compliance, and that was in terms of the Act, um, and therefore, therefore uh, dismissed accordingly. Of the 2760 um, that uh, lodged claims, um, Chair, uh, um, Please mute your microphones, uh, honorable members and those on the platform. You may proceed. Thank you, Chair. Alexander. Thank Go you. Ahead. So 1,449 um, um, claimants opted for financial um, compensation, leaving us with the balance of 1,201 that, that, that opted for, for, for redevelopment, and that is opting for houses um, um, to be built in the area from which they were dispossessed. To date, Chair, we have completed 247 dwellings, 139 in Pilots 1, Phases 1 and 2, the 108 
um, as we've already discussed, um, has now been completed and ready for, for occupation. Um, we, we, we going forward, 954 dwellings will be, will be, bu will be built. And, and as I want to just make it known that that's the number for now, however, claimants do have the right to still change the option to financial compensation. And this 954 a chair are, are, are those who lodged before the 31st of December 1998, and we've categorized them just for the discussion as our old board claimants. Next slide, please. So the, I think we've touched on who the parties are involved in the previous uh, um, presentation by the city chair, so we won't, I won't go over this, but just to say that we want to the ITC committee um, com comprising of all spheres of government, and it is a committee that we're working towards um, being resuscitated. Next slide, please. So there are different um, um, representation committees in, in District 6 chair, which, um, which is important to, to share. It's the, the, the District 6 reference group, which is our current elected body. Um, the District 6 working committee, which, which is the committee that, that, that took the department to court. The District 6 Civic Association that looks at lots of social integration and community matters in the area. The District 6 Advocacy Group, who based mainly represent the interests of the then District 6 homeowners. The District 6 Beneficiary Trust um, is another uh, uh, committee. And then, of course, the District 6 Museum, a chair who leads on the importance of heritage and memory making um, in the space of restitution and restoration. Next slide, please. So some of the milestones I uh, will just briefly touch on chairs that we, in, in 1998, we established a record of understanding and the parties there included the city, the department and the province, where they all gave effect to their joint vision for, for the development of District 6. Then we um, developed the, uh, the framework agreement. Uh, again, the, 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 the parties involved, the beneficiary trust, the city and the department. Um, then between the period 2000 onwards, we then had various 42 D submissions were approved, which meant that 2,526 2, claimants um, uh, claims were settled. We uh, 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 a total of 79 million was paid over to the, the the claimants who opted for financial compensation. And earlier, the city spoke about the spatial development concepts that's taking place. Next slide, please, um, Kelvin. And 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 we basically, as the department and commission. Um, commission that spatial development for framework, which is the basis for the local development currently being discussed. Um, I've spoken about the units that have already been developed and our sound working relationship with the District 6, and 6 Museum. Next slide, please. Okay, so, so the current situation with regard to to, to, to the 108th chair, which I shared with last time, is just to summarize to say that the 108th allocation process involved an independent panel dealing with those that applied for special needs and considered the elderly, illness, and indigence. Further to that um, criteria chair, we also looked at the date of lodgement as part of uh, the, the methodology. We, we continue um, dealing with claimants as we take them um, to, the, to some of the, the, the dwellings that we have um, identified as, as, as show houses in order for them to, to decide whether they want the dwelling or not. We are at the moment also dealing with some issues related to power of attorneys and some family um, disputes. Next slide, please. Thank you, Chair. So that I've just summarized where we now 
um, in, from the from from the Commission's point of view in relation to um, phase three. Thank you very much, Chair. Calvin will now continue. Uh, thank you, Wayne. Um, Chair, um, my presentation will concentrate uh, primarily on phase three, and then we will move on to some aspects of the future development and also include some of the issues uh, regarding the delays, as well as some of the claimant um, committee concerns. Um, these were just notes that we taken in the previous sitting that we were asked to address in this presentation. So we've included it just to address some of those previous concerns. With regards to phase three, um, I think to start, we'll say that it, it was an instruction given to the department by the departmental, sorry, by the intergovernmental political task team in 2014. Um, this, this consisted of uh, the minister, as well as the premier, the mayor, and the minister of human settlements. Um, it was based on the fact that the claimant community had lobbied the minister to remove uh, the District 6 Beneficiary Trust, who were initially entrusted to be the role of the developer as per the settlement agreement. And they wanted new representation, which was duly elected in the form of the reference group. But the reference group then raised their concern that they were incapacitated at the time to, to take over the role of development. And it was asked that the department then act as an intermediary to ensure that there's no dormancy in, in this development that we keep developing while the reference group becomes capacitated to take over the role as developer. And uh, I think that's an important and pertinent um, sort of point to remember in terms of the larger context, because we were initially just there to do phase three. Um, that's been extended now due to the court plan. But this, this phase commenced in 2015 with the construction. But prior to that, we had um, a lot of planning and consultation with the claimant bodies uh, to get to an agreement of what type of housing, um, the, the typologies, as well as consensus on the designs that then also met the criteria of um, the planning authority being the city, as well as the heritage authorities and other uh, interested parties. Um, District 6 is a highly regulated um, environment to construct in. Um, it, it, it unfortunately also has an impact in terms of timeframes. Everything that we do has an enormous amount of approvals that is not normally conventional in, in development, certainly not for government housing. Um, these were just some aerial photographs uh, to give you an indication of the scale and nature of the development. Um, these were taken in April last year, uh, in 21, when we reached what we called practical completion of the, the works. Um, the, there were delays, I think, to address some of the concerns about why did it take so long. We had two um, fundamental challenges or delays on this, this phase. The first one was the initially appointed contractor uh, in 2015 ran into their own financial uh, problems and were unable to pay some of the subcontractors. And then there was a delay in the performance of the, the subcontractors. The department had to intervene eventually and terminate that contractor, Fikile. Um, we then had to undertake a process to reappoint a new contractor to, to, to take over the works, which we did with a National Treasury endorsement. The new contractor was then appointed in uh, 2018, that was Horn Ingalls. Um, to take over the construction and complete the phase. They were on track to complete this phase in 2019. However, um, there were some delays and that was pushed into 2020. Um, further to that, then the COVID lockdown got imposed on everyone and that then delayed the uh, overall handover for the duration of that period, um, specifically because construction work was initially not allowed for. Um, and then when they did eventually have the chance to take over again, 
They were doing so with a reduced capacity because of social distancing regulations and such. So those were some of the challenges which led to the construction delays. Um, but the construction delays, I think, must be separated from the administrative delays, which was raised also as a concern uh, with regards to the occupancy, and I'll, I'll get to that. Those two things, I think, are related, but they're also separate. Um, the, the nature of the development, if you can, if you can see, um, all of these internal streets um, are the original street networks of District 6. We have what we call the row houses. Um, again, the, the typology is derived from the original type of housing that uh, was in District 6. And then we have these abutting apartment blocks on the perimeter of this phase. Um, there's been a lot of inquiries, and I think even in the previous sitting, there was questions about uh, the sizes and the costing. And I think we must, as the developer, just say that the precedent was set in the pilot phases, pilot phases one and two, which if you can see my cursor chair is, is in the background. But those phases were constructed by the, um, the trust. And we couldn't then renege on the standards that they'd set up with the new claimants in the form of a three bedroom was a standard and a minimum of 100 square meters or 95 square meters plus a balcony and so forth. So we were quite constrained, although it had budgetary impacts in terms of the standard and nature of the quality of housing that we have to, to put up. So between that precedent and the fact that we had to comply to redoing the streets and then having to put in row houses, it, it, it sort of developed itself into the shape that you see. Uh, we had a lot of consultation regarding this with the reference group um, at the time who were the nominated group for us to, um, to have discussions with. There was a there's some misunderstanding and misconception about um, the use of some of these units and the, the issue of lifts. We had sort of advocated that if we can consolidate the high rise development into larger buildings, then the cause of those buildings where you have a lift is shared. Uh, the budgetary constraint when it comes to the provision of lifts is not in the capital construction, it is in the maintenance. Um, so what you try and do is to have one lift that serves many people so that the maintenance costs are shared. In these blocks, we have typically six families sharing one core. It's not feasible even for a high income family to have a lift that shared that the maintenance cost is shared by six people. And maintenance for lifts is mandatory. It's not an optional thing. So it wasn't that the department was not um, on being sympathetic to the fact that some claimants uh, with ailments would, would suffer with some of the stairs. It was just the nature of what we had to accommodate. Um, also, the topography of the site, you can see it's on the side of the mountain. Uh, it steps down quite a lot, and having the imposition of having to reestablish the streets also meant that we had to abide by that topography. So there were always going to be steps in this development, um, and it's difficult in terms of the allocation. There's been a lot of cases raised um, by some of the claimants that we're not catering for a sympathetic development that caters for elderly um, actually, it's quite the opposite. We tried our very best in conceptualizing and coming up with this design to incorporate as much um, sort of suitability for that. All of the ground floor units in the apartments are disabled friendly. Um, they, they meant to cater for that. And in terms of the allocation process, they were also the units that were allocated to, to the most elderly. Um, however, if if a claimant is given a unit uh, that ha does have stairs, then they, they have that opportunity, as Wayne said, if it's not suitable for them to, to, to pass this over and wait for a unit in the future phase that may cater better for those needs. Um, again, these this is just some of the nature of the units. Uh, I think, Chair, you will uh, find and the members will find in your visit, um, it, it's a high quality environment. Um, the standards are not in terms of normal standards. Um, 
what you'd expect for government housing. I think this sets a new precedent, certainly for government than restitution housing. Um, I think before I go into five the minutes remaining, can we conclude? Five minutes remaining. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I um, I have some slides just to to give you some background with regards to the interactions with the city. The department commenced with this uh, development in 2015, and at the time, we had a very close working relationship with the city uh, that was set up. And we had received a lot of support in getting this, this work on the ground. And we had an approved SDP, an approved general plan. We were unable to get approved building plans because the property where this, this development is constructed uh, used to belong to the CPUT, which is the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. The land was being donated for restitution purposes. Um, that donation uh, was to the department, but it took several years for CPUT to be able to convince that property. We only received um, that uh, land transfer in 2020, at which point we immediately went to the city with our building plans to say, uh, pursuing our, our end goal, which is to get our occupation certificates. This was during 2020, we immediately gave them our building plans. And I think what I want to highlight here, uh, and I'll address this issue of why safety defects take so long to address. There seems to be a misconception about the department and its contractors' ability to address safety concerns. Um, so if I can just show you, um, you know, typically on, on a balcony like this, what the honorable um, deputy mayor was referring to is, the, you can see on that balcony on the top right hand cor corner picture, um, we have balconies like that in the apartments. The underside of that under building regulation says cannot be exceeding, I think, 10 cent, oh, 50 millimeters. The tolerance that we were given in response was like within 15 or 20 millimeters. I don't really believe that that level of tolerance would mean the child can roll underneath it. We know we don't comply, but I think what what if it, as a corrective action, we had to then go and impose on the contract to, to fix this by putting in flashings underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, this sort of work is normal. In all construction projects, you find that um, the department was never trying to compromise the safety of the claimants. Having gone to the length and extents that we've undertaken here, we certainly didn't want to hand over units that didn't comply to safety standards. So when the city makes mention of issuing us with land use permission, those permissions were issued with conditions. So it's one thing to issue something and say you have the permission to use, but then you indemnify yourself by saying, actually, we're also raising all these safety concerns. So if you do so, you do so at your own behest. It would be irresponsible for us as the department to hand over this to frail elderly claimants, knowing full well the city's given us a list of these compliance issues. So we, we took the choice to not occupy this space knowing that there are health and safety issues, but rather to address the health and safety issues. And that's what we said to the city, please give us a list of all of these issues that we can then address with our contractor. And I think we're, we're um, questions like the one that emanates from uh, Ms. Breitenbach is to why it took so long for the city to or for the department to address it. Um, I think the deputy uh, mayor said that he attended one of the site visits with his team in January of this year. I think the, the timeline needs to be understood. It, if the deputy mayor is attending with building inspectors to go and do an inspection in January of this year, it tells you we still have to wait for that inspection report to be sent to us, which we then submit to the contractor to say, these are the defects identified. Can you please correct them? We have been avidly waiting for those defect lists to be submitted to us for months. And what, what, what the problem is that people seem to think that it was the department's ineptness to address 
these defects that caused the delays. That's not the case. The case is that the administrative process to get to the point where the city would send out a building inspector took the best part of eight months. So the city has got, and I'm not going to read all of these things, but they've got very restrictive planning of um, sort of systems that are very linear and are intolerable to fl any flexibility. So, you know, we would take building plans in November of 2020 and say to the city planners, can you review this? And they would say, no, well, you have no transfer. And we said, there's the transfer from CPUT, but it doesn't show up on their system that the transfer has been enacted. So that one field will not allow us to, to upload all of these building plans. So they don't see it. We then wait another three months to say to them, can you please review this? They go, no, we have to wait for the this, this system to allow us to be able to upload, then we'll be able to review it. Um, then we would also find two months later, we'll receive a comment that we haven't been able to look at this development because we haven't received the payment of the building plans uh, for the building plan approvals. And we have to then take out their own officials emails and send it to an official who has copied in on that and remind him that we are an exempt sort of state because it's restitution housing, the city and their bylaws recognize that and give an exemption for fees. But you know, these, these, these little linear delays is what eventually caused where we are to be right now. And this thing that, that why did the department take so long to address the defects? We've only been allayed to what the defects are since November last year. And the city would go block by block. So if you can see this, they would go and do that block and we'd wait for comments. They would then go to the next block the following week. They would then go to the next block the following week. And we would Thank then- Thank you, wait. Dr. Naidu. Thank you. Unfortunately, we need to move on to the next presentation if we are to be able to cover the questions from honorable members. If we may just wrap it up here. Okay. Honorable members, DG and officials of the department, thank you for the presentation. Let me uh, invite uh, the uh, Land Claims Commission, Mamu Koboto and her team uh, to take us through their presentation. Um, Chairperson, uh, my apologies, Murgit Saramasodi here. Uh, yes, I, would need to I need to reflect that the Dr. Wayne Alexander comes from the commission and he took the first part of this presentation so that it, it flows uh, for the portfolio committee. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. So you are saying, DJ, it's actually this one presentation, it has been dealt by uh, the uh, two, present, uh, two, two presenters. Yeah, yes, it has been, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, just to ensure now that... Then, let us uh, uh, allow uh, Dr. Naidu to finish. I was still thinking uh, we were having then the second presentation also completed. Uh, Dr. Naidu, apologies uh, for that. Uh, please then uh, finish off the presentation. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I think I've addressed the issues and some of the challenges. Uh, um, I think I can also address them in terms of the question, so I don't want to go through them, but I, I've given you an indication. But a, apart from to say that the inspection work that we rely on comes from the building inspectors, and the building inspectors directed only attended this, started attending block by block in October of last year. We then have to receive the first round of comments, and then we have to address those defects and then we have to wait for the building inspectors to come back to see that they are satisfied that we've addressed those comments. And all the way up until January of this year, the building inspectors were still coming around to do their first round of inspections. So this, this thing of why did we take long to address the defects is not true, it's a fallacy. We address those defects very quickly 
And some of these defects, as minute as they may sound, actually are quite arduous to undertake in terms of construction. So we would ask a contractor to go and completely break down a set of stairs and rebuild it, as are we within our rights, as is the city to ask for them to comply. Um, because of a five mole tolerance on one one stair. The way stairs work is if, you, if you've got 10 mole shaved off on one stair, it makes the other two stairs on either side of it to be non-compliant. So um, we have to then knock down those stairs, put concrete up, then retile it, all of which takes time. And we had contractors working weekends and working with extreme amount of resources because all of the pressure that we were being put under, we were transferring to them. So it wasn't as if they were being uh, tardy in dealing with this, or it was the department's ineptness at being able to, to do that task. It was the fact that we were only made aware of these things very late. And um, especially, you know, to address Ms. Breitenbach, I know that she gave um, some, she gives media feedback and a lot of, um, media uh, pronouncements regarding this. I think if, if we can have more interactions where we're able to share how these processes work, it would give a more balanced and fair um, public perception out there in terms of what is the nature of the delays and what led to those delays. And it certainly was not the, the inability of the contractor to address that or the department's um, unwillingness to attend to those things. Um, and I just want to note here the, the issue of the occupancy certificates. We've been pursuing this. Like I said previously, we've, um, we've received the letter of use, but it was subject to conditions. So it was a very contradictory thing to send to us because it didn't really provide us with anything to do apart from an indemnify the city. So to make reference to it, uh, you can't say we issued your occupation or a letter of use, but then at the same time, we've identified critical issues of safety concern. Um, you're then asking us to act irresponsibly if you want us to hand over such to these elderly claimants, which we chose not to. Um, so I think that that's one thing. And then this issue of being exempt I think all of these processes that I referred to being linear, they, they are what caused us to be in the situation that we're in at the moment. Had, had the building inspectors undertaken their visits in June of last year, when the buildings were completed, um, we would have received their reports in the same month. We would have had the contractor address them within a three week period. And we would have had occupation by the end of July, if not 1st of August. As it stands, those inspections were, were only being conducted up until late January of this month. And those were the first rounds. So it's not that we haven't addressed the issue. And it's the first time I want to make it known. Um, we, we've, we've been following up with the city because it's been alluded to that we will no longer be getting occupation certificates. But in this first presentation by Ms. Nodier, it was the first official correspondence because we never received the letter or we've never received this, the, sorry, this legal letter that they say will come at the end of the week, but we haven't received the actual certificates for the homes themselves. We're now being officially, formally, I assume, told that we are exempt and we will not be issuing, or they will not be issuing occupancy certificates, but rather a letter of occupation. That's never been conveyed to us. So this entire process that we've undertaken to try and get there um, could have been brought to our attention and it would have curtailed a lot of these, these processes that we've had to undertake. And it would have also meant that we would have had an earlier occupancy possible. Um, Chair, um, this is just, um, if I can conclude there with the issues of phase three, just this is just a so short summary. I'll try to do this much quicker with regards to the court order. Um, I think as the commission, uh, sorry, the committee asked the last time, they, they do want some 
um, incremental updates on this process. We will start um, including the committee in our quarterly reports to court. The department um, is complying with a court order made by the Land Claims Court in of a judgment in November of 2018. To do so, we've had to, to comply, we've had to submit a plan with a costing and a time frame for the redevelopment of District 6. Um, this is what that plan comprises of. Um, if you can see my cursor, this is phase three that is currently being completed. Uh, these are the ensuing, well, initial phases, pilot phases one and two. Um, the remaining red phases are the phases that we've included in the plan to court. They are for the 954 remaining claimants. Um, they, the financial estimate was 1.8 billion Rand for the 954 units. Um, I think we, we've had discussions with the city with regards to the option of them contributing to um, some of the bulk service costs as well as some of the costs for roads and such. And we've had engagement at an intergovernmental level where we facilitated meetings between the city and national treasury and the Department of Human Settlements so that they could find a financial mechanism to support us as the developer um, and the sole department that's responsible at this point. Um, I think that's important to note because on phase three, um, the department received no other financial contribution from any other entity within the state. And when, when we quizzed about our expenditure, I think people, they divide the cost by the amount of units and they work out uh, per, per unit cost. Um, I don't think that's that's a fair attribute of how you, you do your costing because you normally will have to, um, you normally have to take into account that different spheres of government fund different aspects. So your bulk infrastructure could be done by the province, the, the, the electricity and such could be run by the city, the roads and infrastructure also from different spheres. And then you, you have a cost that everyone knows for housing, which is only for the top structure. In District 6, the department paid for everything. So to do the undertaking of the earthworks, to do the construction, every street lamp, every tree planted, every road, every bit of electrical infrastructure which, we, which we're putting in, not just to enable this phase, but the larger area had to be paid for out of the single coffers of the department. And I think going forward, what we're trying to, or what we've tried to do thus far at an intergovernmental level is to assist the city also with being able to make that contribution. Um, and that's what we pursued with them. Um, with regards to this chair, um, we've separated this, these 954 um, units into two, two builds and several phases. The appointment on the first build has already commenced as as detailed design. Um, we're starting with the first level of on-site commencement, but um, as much as we're ready and enthusiastic to go, we're constrained by some of the mandatory requirements in terms of the environmental uh, participatory period before we can cons con start with construction and such. So. Um, I think, Chair, this court order plan, if we have a future engagement, we will de deal with it because there's a lot of substance at a technical level that may be of interest to the committee. So I'll just run through what it is. You know, this is the type of units that we um, we put into the plan. It was derived from uh, the original type of houses. It was also extensively um, consulted with the claimants. The claimants then, after the submission of this plan to court, um, wrote to the minister to say that they were concerned about some of the room sizes and some of the, the ability of these units to uh, accommodate their families. And the minister then asked uh, the technical team to do a review of the plan uh, because I think, Chair, I wanna raise one thing, the, the issue of gentrification was, was brought up also in the last sitting, and I think there's been a letter raised. Um, the, the, the intention of restitution resettlement is that 
the actual community comes back, that this is not just the transfer of an asset. So if we had to provide spaces like, uh, you know, a commercial one bedroom flat, um, a, a family can't move back and take up that space. So inevitably what happens is those people will keep that as an asset, but they'll put it out to rent. So the, the eventual community that will end, end up residing here are actually people paying rent to the, the actual uh, claimants. And what we're trying to achieve here is to, to create an environment where the claimants themselves come back and there's a conducive environment for them to be able to, to live in. So the minister took that very seriously and we did increase the sizes of uh, the units as well as um, it, it, it does have an impact, not just on cost, but in terms of how much of land we actually utilize, because we also are acknowledging the fact that there has to be future development in District 6 for future claimants. So the more land we utilize on these claimants, the less will be there. But we, we managed to achieve a balance on that, we feel. Uh, like I said, there's been a lot of uh, progress with regards to this. We have a full-time team working uh, at full intensity, trying to get us on site as soon as possible. Our immediate goal is to not have any lag between the handing over at phase three and waiting, uh, you know, having a period of dormancy on site. We initially tried, oh, not tried, we actually did commence with earthworks and rubble removal prior to the lockdown. Uh, some of that works were then curtailed by lockdown regulations, but we want to recommence now with some of the earthworks, and that's what we're working towards. Um, consultation with the claimants. Um, like I said, there were mandatory consultation with all parties, uh, but with regards to the uh, reference group that we deal with, they had written to lobby to the minister regarding the um, the sizing and of the units accommodated in the, the court plan. There was then a comprehensive report done in terms of the impact of what would happen if we had to increase the size to work, to work, to work out the, the, the sizes as well as changes. Honorable members, please uh, mute your microphones. And let us ask uh, Dr. Naidu to also conclude. Yes, yeah. So th that's what we've been doing with the claimants. Uh, I think the commission is also adhering to some of the claimants. I think um, I think one of the, the critical things is that the claimants uh, were accommodated into a session where during the course Nazim of Saido, Nazim Saido, please mute your microphone. Nazim Said, please mute your microphone. Nazim, please mute your microphone. Thank you. You may proceed. Then I do apologies for that. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think uh, with regards to consultation of the claimants, um, the department held a or supported the, the reference group with having a, um, a session where all of the Verified claimants were uh, invited to come and review the changes that were accommodated to see that they were amenable to support it. Um, they, this was quite a prolonged period because of uh, the COVID protocols, but especially given the, the age and health of, of the average beneficiary in District 6. Um, it was held uh, at our offices in Mowbray. There were 14 sessions. Um, 478 of the 954 claimants did attend or have all were invited. And um, the uh, reference group then drew a report. They had a questionnaire uh, and that report was submitted to the minister with their comments and endorsement of the plan for us to proceed with and commence with the next phases. Um, I think uh, Wayne has alluded to some of these things. I think uh, in terms of the the commission, they've they've engaged with the community extent substantially. They've created an SMS and email system to send them updates. They've also uh, created a system where they communicate with the new order claimants. Um, I think the last two points from a development point of view, Chair, is that the department is 
now pursuing at a full rapid pace the implementation of the, the court order plan for the 954 units. And we are trying to accelerate that construction plan by having multiple phases constructed at the same time to claw back some of the time we lost during COVID. Um, I thank you, Chair. That's my presentation. Thank you, Adenaidu. And as also uh, honorable members, uh, thank uh, the presentation that was put to us by uh, Land Claims Commission. We will now open the sessions to questions of clarity or comments. Honorable uh, Tabe. Thanks, Chair, and thanks uh, to the Commission and the Department for an elaborative uh, presentation. Three issues, Chair, comes to mind. One, the original allocation when the District 6 uh, rebuilt project was started. Is the money, the funds still sufficient? Or how does all these delays since about 2015 and the likes affecting that? I'm asking this chair to check if we wouldn't at some stage um, hit the block and told there's no money. Is this money reinfenced somewhere where it is kept? And I'm thinking here about what happened with the COVID relief that there were budgets that were need to be reallocated that were not used. How is this money reinfenced? To what communication strategies or mechanisms has the department put in place to keep the claimants informed? The delay when you listen to the presentation is genuine. It has been issues of intergovernmental uh, issues between them and the city, but uh, where the claimants taken on board or how are they taking the claimants on board throughout these processes? so that they don't need to come to the committee to understand what is going on. My last question, Chair, would be for both. Um, what lessons have you learned out of this process of implementation of phase three? And how do you intend moving forward to with phase four and five to at least improve on implementation of this project? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Tabe. Uh, Honorable Meste. Thank you, Chairperson. I think most of my questions was covered, Chair. Um, I, I just want to come back to the issue that I raised earlier about the attendance of the Minister and the Deputy Minister. Chair, I really think we need to get the intergovernmental relations better on this um, on this. Uh, project or finalization of this. Chairperson, it is not good for us as members of parliament to sit here and it seems like, you know, departments um, doesn't matter which political parties they belong to, it seems like they are working past each other. So Chair, I would really like to find out if we as a portfolio committee can write a letter, maybe addressed to the minister and to the mayor or the deputy mayor of the city of Cape Town and ask them to ensure that we um, don't have long processes in, in you know, uh, these meetings. I would also like to find out, Chair, if we can be uh, uh, given um, dates or, or when was this last meetings of the intergovernmental departments uh, held um, and even ask for minutes of that meetings because Jay, it looks like there's a lot of um, talking past each other um, in this projects that is going on. And then on the on the issue of the finances, the question was asked, but I I think maybe at some stage we will also have to meet with Treasury to understand the financing of this. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honourable Stay. The Honourable uh, Dr. Matias. Uh, 
Honorable Trader, Mamu Trader, Mamu Trader. Thank you, Chaperson. Sorry, I don't know. My gadget just froze on me as I was trying to 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 unmute. Uh, my apologies to the committee. Uh, Chairperson, on this one, Chair, I would like to reserve my comments precisely because Chair, I'm a bit uh, taken aback by the presentation of the department which clearly states that what they have done and their role and and what the role what was what is the role of the state of Cape Town. Hence I'm saying can I reserve my comment for now and and submit um opt to submit meet my questions in writing to the city of Cape Town because seemingly it's it's I I I did this and the city of Cape Town did that. And Chair, I'm not even sure whether the um, uh, city of Cape Town is still within our meeting. Hence, I will opt to, to submit my questions in writing, Chair, because I don't want a situation of, she said, I said, I just need the answers because people have been waiting for quite too long. This dilly dally of, things is not is not assisting anyone. We are talking about people's lives here. So I will opt for 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 for, for submission of questions and writing check. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Trader. Uh, Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, apologies for the background noise if you have a gala. I'm really on the field today. But um, according to the presentations that we got, uh, apparently Figi Le... Okay, so now. Apparently Figi Le, uh, construction was appointed for 167 million. And then when they were 55% uh, complete with the project, uh, the, uh, somehow they, they could not carry on. And, uh, but they had been paid 85 million already for the 55% of the work. Um, and then it says that uh, the department was going to call on the construction guarantee. I'd like to know what the how much the construction guarantee was. That's the first question. And then secondly, another, another um, I think it's Ho and Inglis, another contractor was appointed at 178 million. Now Chair, I, I, I don't quite understand this because if the original contractor was at 167 and they are paid 85 million for 55% of the work, meaning that there was only 45% of the work left. So how could they now appoint another person for 178 million, which is over and above the previous price. So I am a, a little bit confused, Chair. And apparently they are claiming part of the 85 back from the previous contractor. But in my mind, with my little knowledge of building, they would have paid according to, um, what do they call this thing, Annette? According to, uh, you know, the, 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 the builder does a step and they get paid. They do a step and they get paid. So I don't understand how they could have been overpaid if there was somebody inspecting, you know, doing inspections before the payment was actually made. So that is around the uh, construction chair. This question may, may have been asked, I'm not sure, because I was in and out of um, the meeting. Um, what is the type of ownership 
of these, these, these District 6 apartment units? Is it a sectional title or a share title? And uh, whether it's a sectional or a share title, was training given to the occupants in terms of their re responsibilities towards their buildings in terms of levies and, uh, and, um, uh, and other things that we, we, we normally pay under a, a sectional title or a share title? Was training given? Um, I think, Chair, that is, oh, and was there any communication given to those that have not yet received their units, meaning phase, phase four and five? Are they being communicated to? Thank you, Chair. Those are my three questions. Thank you. Thank you, Wamun Babama. It's a uh, uh, honorable Papa. Wow, Papa. Thank you, Chair. Let me also thank the presentation from the department. Uh, my first comment was uh, was that it would be that I wish it would have been before the presentation by the uh, lady Erica. But only now I'll just ask what would be this their suggestion on the way of getting out of this problem of the issue of certificates. The best way to do in their opinion as to get around the current stalemate. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Papa. Uh, Honorable uh, Masiba. Hi, Chair. Sorry, I was uh, not able to follow everything. But, Chair, the little that I followed, I'm just going to really comment and uh, maybe uh, must ask a question to the department. Um, as uh, May Tswede indicated, that uh, this blame game that is being played here is a bit of a challenge for us. I find it also a bit of a challenge. So. I think the, the issue for me is to hear from the department if they have established a stakeholder engagement forum between themselves and the city of Cape Town in order to you know, address these issues. Because it is my feel that um, this matter should not have been really coming to the committee, should have been dealt with at the stakeholder forum if there is, and uh, maybe you know, share with us you know, in terms of the engagement between themselves um, in resolving all these matters, because uh, we have been really on this issue for quite a long while, and I think it's time that the department really uh, make sure that um, you know they hold each other, uh, meaning themselves and the city of Cape Town, you know, to account in terms of the deliverables that are required to deliver on this particular project. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Masipa. Uh, Honorable Memarlo. Honorable Chairperson, I definitely covered by this, the, 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 some of the speakers when they were asking questions. I don't have any question for now. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Marshal. Memarlo. Thank you very much, Chair. And let me welcome the presentation by the department. Uh, Chair, firstly, I would want um, to get an indication from the department how much budget was utilized for this program and from how much is budgeted from the first phase up until the last phase, how much has been utilized this far which contractors have been involved and who has been paid and how much. Two, Chair, is during the process of implementation of this project, which SMMEs were involved and whether there were youth uh, enterprises that were involved 
and whether there were women enterprises that were involved in this part and how much has been allocated for those particular um, constituencies in as far as uh, budgetary issues involving the entire project. Two, Chair, is what lessons have the department learned through this particular project in as far as intergovernmental relations so that in future we do not see what we have seen in relations to the city of Cape Town and the department. What is it that can be done better to mitigate issues of land claims or, I mean, claimants having to wait this long where there could have been bilaterals between the department and uh, whoever will be involved in the future in relations to this matter. I'm raising this chair because it could be that we are dealing with uh, District 6 today, but in future there will be other municipalities that are going to be involved so that we have a smooth, a seamless process that do not find our people being stranded in the street in relations to this matter. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Honorable uh, Member Shadzi. Uh, honorable members, is there any other honorable member on the platform that I've not been able to recognize who may wish to pose a question or comment? If not, uh, honorable uh, members, let me also take the opportunity to sponsor a few questions um, and perhaps I would pick up uh, where Member Shadzi uh, left off um, on uh, the issues uh, that Honourable Members have touched on. Firstly, I would like uh, Honourable Members that we uh, are able to get a full uh, written report on all financing of District 6 since the settlement of land claims. If we can uh, get that submitted uh, urgently to the Secretariat. And I would also uh, request uh, that uh, the Commission must account for every cent that has been spent and uh, uh, for what or uh, and on what it has been spent on honorable members. Thirdly, if a district six model is replicable in similar uh, claims elsewhere, I would uh, want to understand if this model can be replicated anywhere else. Uh, in uh, the country from the experiences that uh, we've been able to witness. Honorable members, the commission has a list of all complaints or complainants who approached the committee and uh, lodged their uh, claims which have not been finalized, uh, which are all uh, pre-1998. We therefore request the Commission and the Department to write letters to these claimants and complaints uh, responding to their issues. We will seek a progress report within three months uh, in this regard. Honorable members, uh, the blame game between the commission and the city in regards to the inspections and plans will not help us at all at this stage. In actual fact, had the contractor did their work correctly, there would be no need for additional work to correct the problems we are experiencing today. We are here now and we need to move forward in finding solutions 
together. Let us make District 6 work for the benefit of its claimants and beneficiaries. Thank you. We'll now hand over, honorable members, uh, to the Land Claims Commission, as well as the department, to give us responses, if we may be able to also uh, note time in giving our responses as the session will be uh, finishing at 12. You may proceed, Land Claims Commission. Chairperson, let me allow Dr. Win Alexander to come in and followed by Dr. Kelvin Nandu. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Ramasodi. Um, thank you very much, Chair. And, and, and I note the questions. Um, <clears throat> I will um, make sure that we, we, we put together the report that you've requested with regard to the finance. Um, accounting for every cent that was spent um, and where we now with regard to the budget. It's safe to say, Chair, that, that the 42C grant funding, which amounts to about plus minus 480 million, and um, that's been ring fenced um, for part of the redevelopment of, of District 6. Um, and we would certainly give a, give a breakdown of what we spent in our report, which will be tabled soon. Uh, with regard to the complaints, we have uh, in the last report, last quarter, put a matrix together where we had uh, uh, noted the complaints and um, the, the answers to those, but we will certainly put it in a letter form and send it to the various um, complainants. Regarding the, the, the communication chair, yes, we do have a strategy which we also uh, uh, will be sharing. But so to say, we have been in touch with 108 claimants um, who have part of the part of the group that's been allocated to dwelling and have been updating them regarding matters. Now that we have also a further update from the city, we can take that further um, in, in giving them as to, to, to what the next steps would be. We, we also inform through the various committees of what the latest is with regard to the 954 dwellings that must take place. In the before COVID um, chair, we used to have meetings with all these claimants to give updates, um, as cited by Calvin. The, the reference group also shared some of the information with um, the, the, the people when the, the, the claimants visited the Mowbray offices to look at what the future dwellings would be. Um, we will, however, also then update them. The court plans that we, we, we courtly need to present is also an update with regarding matters um, 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 pertaining to, to future <clears throat> development, um, Chair. I, I do have a sign with you, Chair, uh, my head of legal in the office, just to speak to the issue of the sectional title deeds. Ben Mars, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson and members. Uh, yes, just the uh, issue pertaining to the sectional title deed, uh, we must just appreciate that the development in phase three is a mixture of freehold titles or the row houses and sectional title scheme that's the apartment blocks. So there's not actually an issue like a shared title, is that uh, <clears throat> we've appointed now conveyances uh, to transfer the property likewise. In terms of the apartment blocks, we there's a mandatory uh, act, the sectional title act, that we will have to comply with. Uh, what happens that the, the, the units will be transferred to the respective claimants. The common areas will be administered but by a body corporate, and that, that would be the basis in which uh, the claimants will, in phase three, uh, cooperate together. So those, those, there's an enabling legislation for sectional title schemes. Uh, so we are busy uh, as we speak now and we've instructed the state attorney to commence with the transfer of registration 
of the units in uh, phase three. Our initial focus is per the minister's instruction is to focus on the elderly people. And we've identified uh, 35 of these, uh, what we call the original dispossessed individuals. And we are in the process of transferring the dwellings uh, to the elderly people. So the state of 10 is our conveyance of record. If I may touch on the ensuing phases, that's phase four or both one and phase uh, uh, five or both two, uh, we are also going to instruct the state attorney to assist. Uh, although there's a capacity constraint in the state attorney's office, they have a mechanism in which they can outsource uh, conveyancing matters to private uh, uh, conveyances. So this is underway, Chair. We have a meeting down tomorrow with the head of the state attorney, Mr. Becky, to discuss the ensuing phases. But the phase underway, the current one, we've got the state attorney doing the work at the very advanced stage. I must just say we had a meeting with the city of Cape Town pertaining to accelerating the rates clearance because that was identified as one of the biggest stumbling blocks sometimes, the clearance of rates before one can lodge for transfer and the registration. And we've gone so far as even enlist the services and assistance of the Master of the High Court in matters where there are deceased estates, because that's also a potential hold up and delay that might occur there. But even the Master of the High Court is placed the fullest response uh, assistance and cooperation in the transfer of registration matters. So that's in a nutshell the issue about the uh, sectional title schemes and the uh, where we are with the current transfers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. That's that's uh, all from um, the Commission side, um, side, and we will certainly um, write up the reports as requested. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Dade Alexandra. Uh, let us uh, move on uh, for responses from the department. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, start, Honorable Tlape uh, inquired about uh, the funding. I think um, the Commission has, has referred to the funding is recompensed and is available. In terms of lessons learned uh, for intergovernmental relations, there certainly have been lessons learned, and I think this addresses several other concerns raised by members. Like I said, um, there was an intergovernmental steering committee established at the outset when this, this phase three was conceptualized. And um, at that stage, this the, that um, body set every two weeks and worked very intensively and the, the need for it existed prior to the commencement of construction because it was dealing with all of these planning issues, dealing with all of the heritage issues, and having the stakeholders then could, that could expedite uh, those processes. And it worked very successfully at that point. And it, the, that committee tended to taper off because there was less uh, work for it to do after the commencement of construction. I think uh, our lessons learned is to maintain that committee, uh, certainly now with the future phases and going forward and to maintain that level of intensity and constant meetings. Um, we, we definitely do have a relationship with the city. It's not just, just through these forums or through formal um, interactions uh, or correspondence only relate to the city. We meet with them very, very often. Um, with Mrs. Nodia and her team, um, and they 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 do try their best. Unfortunately, some of the processes are not within their mandate alone. Um, so the next question regarding uh, Honourable Stain, um, yes, we will. I think uh, we take a note of the the attendance of the minister, but the intergovernmental steering committee and the need for intergovernmental relations. I've alluded to that and how we intend to reestablish that committee to be more impactful and to meet more regularly. Uh, Honorable Chuete is asked to reserve her comments and will be writing to the city. Honorable Mbamba's question regarding um, the contracts for this phase and uh, Fikile construction 
doing 55% of the work and then being paid 85. Fikile where and he uh, was, she was quite correct to say that, sorry, um, that they you only pay on milestone delivery. You don't just pay things up front. So at the time and point that Fikile were starting to default, we'd already paid them and their subcontractors uh, for works done. But the works that they had done were preparatory. They were doing foundations. They were doing the structures. They were doing a lot of the concrete work. Um, by the time we had to terminate, and the termination process takes about six months for a construction project of this nature. Like she said, also we were we have pursued a construction guarantee acquisition from them, and there's a legal process that's being undertaken for us to claim against them for our losses on the project. Um, but when we appointed Ho and Ingalls, that was a three-year. There was that was three years after the original uh, appointment. So there's fluctuation in construction costs. There's escalations. Ho and Ingalls also then had to come in and rectify a lot of work. And there was a dormancy period on site um, for about 10 months, maybe you can call it a year, where there was no work because Fikile, even though they were on site, that stopped doing any work. And there was a lot of uh, damages, you know, just the element itself in that part of Cape Town is quite severe on exposed concrete on all of the foundations. So when Ho and Ingalls actually were appointed, the first thing that they had to do was in, undertake corrective works to undertake all the damages that had incurred over that period of dormancy. So that's where that, that difference comes from, and that's, we can provide all the documentation for that. Um, milestones, and then in terms of type of ownership, the commission has dealt with that. She asked about training given regarding that. We haven't given training because we've only recently allo allocated and identified um, the claimants who will be receiving those units. These only pertain to the apartments. So the shared ownership is only for people who are sharing the apartment blocks. The, the, the row houses are all uh, independently owned. What I will say is that prior to uh, this, we had consultation again with the reference group to explain to them how this works. And what we've done from our side is in, in the normal scheme of how um, Townhouses are managed. There's a lot of common space, uh, common gardens, common. We don't have any of that here. All of the uh, extents apart from what is contained within the homeowner's domain is going to be transferred onto the local authority. So they're not going to pay for the upkeep of the streets, the trees, all of that there. So it, we, we've taken into account in terms of the design consideration, how to minimize those costs and I don't think the cost that will be levied to these types of environment for these beneficiaries are similar to what we attribute to a market-related private development. Um, Honorable Kappa, uh, he also said he will be addressing issues with the city. Uh, Honorable Masipa um, also alluded to the need for intergovernmental um, relations and is there a structure for stakeholders uh, at a governmental level i've alluded to that yes there is the intergovernmental steering committee um honorable mashlap was reserved his com comments honorable mashlati um i think with regards to how the money has been allocated that will be covered in the report that the commission will provide. Uh, Chair, you also asked to account for all of the monies that's been spent, and we will do so. With regards to the comments um, about who has been paid uh, in terms of allocation for uh, SMMEs and uh, women, um, the, the pre-qualification that this Treasury has put out on contracts for 30% allocation came into effect after these contracts were administered. So we, we, we had included our own aspects of community involvement. So initially, when we had interactions with the claimant community, we asked them 
to go back and find out all of the registered SMMEs that existed in the community. What we found that there were very few actual registered uh, SMMEs that participate, but we received a long list of individuals who were members of the households of claimants that uh, had skills in construction. We then handed over that list to the contractor to ensure that all of those individuals who are unemployed would be employed or given opportunities to be employed. We also had a component of our NARISEC program within the department deployed to undertake construction related internships uh, during this contract. Um, also, there was a, a question about the intergovernmental relations, but I have addressed that. Uh, Nkosi Chair, uh, with regards to the, the report, uh, I think the Commission has done so. I think I've addressed all of the questions raised by members. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Naidu, for the responses, uh, DG. Any uh, last uh, words from you? No, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, another members of the uh, committee. Um, I, I have summarized the issue to say um, we really need to reflect in the report also, Chair, on the IGR and how we have been working to date. Uh, in the report that the chair has requested. We also need to reflect, I think, on the lessons learned because any project reporting would need to have that chair and uh, we will also make sure that we have that. I think there's a, also an element in terms of accountability and also transparency on dealing with the financials and accounting to date that we will also avail chair. I think the, the issue around the budget chairperson is an issue that we assist with um, because the current budget that we are having uh, dictates that we have engagements with national treasury, with human settlements and the city. And we have already had the meetings and looking forward to who takes what uh, in moving and completing this process. And we will also be able to share that with you, Chair. Thank you very much uh, to Honorable Chair and the Honorable Members of this Portfolio Committee. Thank you, Ndade Ramasodi, the DG of the Department of Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. Let us also thank all the officials of the department who availed themselves for today's meeting with the Portfolio Committee. We would also want to extend a word of uh, thanks uh, to uh, the Land Claims Commission uh, on uh, their presentation and uh, input and responses to the questions that were posed by honorable members. I just also uh, take the opportunity to thank the city of Cape Town for their presentation and their input. Honorable uh, members, uh, we will uh, come back uh, to the District 6 issue to ring our oversight as uh, we've uh, alluded that we will send an application to Parliament to do oversight uh, of uh, District 6 and the work that is being done there by the department and the relevant entities. That brings us, honorable members, to the end of uh, our presentations. We had uh, the minutes that we wanted to uh, uh, dispense of uh, today. But uh, since we are running out of time, we will defer those minutes to the next meeting. I will request uh, the Secretariat to ensure that uh, we have the, the minutes uh, adopted and uh, uh, disposed of uh, in our next meeting. With that uh, said, uh, honorable members, uh, thank you uh, for your attendance and for uh, ensuring that we continue to hold the department and its entities accountable uh, for uh, the work uh, that they do. Uh, we have a, a sitting at uh, two o'clock in the National Assembly and will request uh, those uh, that will be joining in uh, on a hybrid uh, to do so uh, as uh, early as uh, possible so that uh, when the session starts, we can all be uh, on board. 
Uh, with that said, honorable members, have a wonderful day ahead and a great week uh, ahead. Uh, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Recording stopped.